and you're live on Dead Radio. Yo, yo, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dead Radio with your main man. Bangy <laughs> Z. Um, shot at mother-in-law in Craig Hall. Amazing restaurant. You guys should check it out. Uh, address will be in the description. Um, today, we've got a very special guest. Um, you know, we only deal with special guests. Why are you giggling? <laughs> He's smiling. Um, but you know that we don't introduce our guests. Um, so, yeah. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So, yeah. What's your name and what do you do? Hi, everybody. My name is Nikki Wedlova. I am a creative artist currently working with hair. Yeah, but I don't think that was a good description. <laughs> I don't think there's... I'll tell you why I don't think it is. Because, like, I th feel like there's much more depth to what you do than just being a creative. I think, I think people I saying they're creative is so vague. Yes. I know you do, but, like, you have your... St um, what do they call it? Like, your claim to fame. Like, not claim to fame, but you... Which is what? <laughs> I have no... Your hair? hair you're basically... A, not, I can't say hair, hair artist. You're a hair artist. That's your claim to fame, like. Yeah, but also hair artists, other people uh, interpret it as hairstylists. No. Hairstylists call themselves hair, hair artists now. I've never heard that before, and they're lying. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to call myself a hair artist, then everyone was like, hey, I'm like, okay. No, no. You, you so need to keep I'm that. Like, I'm an artist. So that no, I, I think you need to keep hairstylists because. Um, because of what you really do. Like, um, mm. I, I think what you do... I feel like it limits me, yeah. It does. Ah. It does, but look, if I was to get... If I say I'm an artist working with hair, no. That doesn't mean anything. But Respectfully. Like, okay. Hey! Okay, <laughs> I'm saying artist. <laughs> I, that's what I think. I could be wrong, though, but I feel like you could say I'm a hair artist and this and that and that and that, but the main one still... Okay. Has to stick. You get me? I heard you. you get me? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so, to my introduction. Yes. You've done your part. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Nikki Wazlova. I am a hair artist. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Happy. Well done. I'm <laughs> happy. I'm ecstatic. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, obviously, there's a lot of layers to pick under mm -hmm. but i want to start like where you from um like where were you born and where did you grow up hmm. so i was born here in joburg but i lived in different parts of soweto mm -hmm. Kampulo, kilane orlando west and Dipu. dope mm -hmm. i think that's the first time i get someone from soweto here Really? I think so. No way. Oh, no, 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 no. Sunshine. Sunshine is also from Soweto. Oh, yeah, I'm full of. Yeah. Yeah. It's mainly the women, though. Ah. I see you guys are doing a lot. Eh? The cool ones. <laughs> kind of doing a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. But what would you say is the area that really developed you as a person? Like the person that you look in the mirror now. Oh, my God. Where would you say that area is the one that filled that class? Ah, uh, okay. Maybe I can say Deep Blue because I moved there when I was 13. So I guess that's where I was discovering more about myself and who I am. Okay. Yeah. Where did you go to school? I went to school, high school. Mm -hmm. Everything. The, the works. Yo, okay. Pre my primary. primary school was, <laughs> <laughs> okay, my primary school was in Fulo. Okay. In Seveni, lower okay. primary school. Why you look like you and, forgot? <laughs> yeah, because I'm trying to remember. Like, oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. And then I moved to Kilane, Orlando West. Then okay. I went to Tula Sizwe, higher primary. And then my high school was a girls' school in Middlelands, Metsibofo. Oh, dope. How did you find that, girls' school? Uh, it was... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Um, Why would you say different. that? I think it was different because it was just us women. Um, so doing whatever that we want. And doing whatever that you like. Yes. Like with no... You know, doing it for men yeah i wish i went to like a, i wish i went to a boys school for those reasons like i can imagine yeah. being in a space where men are just doing things yeah. for doing things that they like exactly because you know when you like when you go to like a mixed school like 
to a certain degree, like you're still doing some things for girls. Yeah, like, of course, of course. You're There's still pressure. being funny in the class for girls. You know what I mean? For a guy. Yeah, those things were still happening though. Um, fighting for guys oh, outside, no. like <laughs> around the neighborhood. Yeah, How? yeah, you get those because uh, most girls lived around the Midlands. So oh, yeah, like, so hey, the same I guy. Like, guy oh damn! Yeah, it was so cool. I mean, we're even imitating uh, Squatter Cam. I was part of the group we're imitating Squatter Cam, and we got so famous, famous. So we were both in other schools. <laughs> Yeah, it what? Yeah. <laughs> it was blabber, by the way. For real? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, and but we got punished for that. Cause Why? We bunked school to go perform. Oh, come on, dude. It. Like, yeah. really? I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was happening after school. <laughs> no, it was Fridays. It was Fridays. Yeah. Then, yeah like, Crazy. That sounds pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was such a good school. Actually. Okay, and at that point, let's say high school was the girl's school, right? Yeah. Do you think there was any... Is that where you picked up on something creative from there? Uh, or was it already yeah, in you? when it comes to hair, a friend of mine used to plait hair. Yeah. So she, she used to plait my hair, so I used to do these different cornrows because hip-hop inspired me at that time. So, so you haven't inspired by hip-hop, eh? Yeah, because I used to even go to Snakhes, you know those hip-hop Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. like hip-hop, hip-hop, hip-hop. that's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was during our time. I mean, I was born in the 80s. Oh, really? I don't get that vibe from you. Really? Yeah. yeah a lot of people don't. You so. get a, you give a very young vibe. That's why yeah. when you're like, Scott Camp, I'm like, Scott Camp? How old are you? <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> I don't look old. Wow. That's Scott Camp. Yeah. That was really, like, like when you said Scott Camp, it caught me off guard. Yeah, but yeah. But now, I, okay, now I understand. Now yeah, I understand. Okay, yeah. cool. So I can say then my creativity started there, but I was still really confused. But I was inspired by hip hop, so I'm assuming yeah. you'd see a hip hop music video and start dressing, trying to dress like them or imitate them, even yeah. with the hairstyles. Yeah. And then from there it develops. Yes. But when does it start to be a thing that like I'm creatively in a different world than the other people? When did it? Uh, I think for me, my creativity. I mean, like my creativity kicked in very late uh, because after high school I took a gap year mm -hmm. and then I worked at a retail store mm -hmm. and then after that I was like okay maybe retail is where I'm supposed to be so then I studied uh, retail business yep. management for two years I didn't like it and then I was like no I'm supposed to be doing something creative so then I changed courses right still within UJ but a fashion then I did clothing management right yeah so that's when then I found out like okay I think that's when you started to fall in love with clothes yeah I'm so that assuming. was two yeah, you're giving us your age, by the way. But yeah, it's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, you're not one of those. Oh, no, 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 no. Cool. No, that's no, great. No. Amazing. Um, cool. So that's when it hit. Yes. And then you di you dive deeper deep into clothes. Yes. Now it's only clothes. Yes. Fine. Clothes, 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 clothes. And then you, I'm assuming you graduate. Yeah. What do you do after you graduated? Um, I work at a corporate. Okay. A retailer at Con. It's okay. It's no available now, but yeah. yeah, I work at EdCon for like three years. What are you doing in EdCon? Um, so I went in there with um, an internship doing QA, so that's quality technologies in an intimate wear department. So that, that's what does that mean? Cool. So it means you check quality of your pajamas, bras. Also oh, quality control. Quality control. So you check like measurements, fabrics, if they're okay. Mm -hmm. They match up to the standards or the requirements of EdCon. Oh, crazy. And from there, I was like, mm, I'm into buying, fashion buying. So I was like, uh, let me get into fashion buying. I've got a job, I applied. And then I, I was an assistant buyer in the intimate way, but then moved on to the shoe department. Okay. So Did I'm you enjoy sure familiar with the fashion buying. No. It's okay. So for those that don't know, you I, I, I felt like fashion buying. Okay, this is, let, me, let me tell yeah. you what I think it is. Yeah. I think fashion buying is when um, brands give you, because I know Nike has one, like Nike yes. has a room like in the offices that's only open to um, buyers. Yes. So they come in and see stock before it actually gets into stores. Yes. And then they are allowed to buy for their specific stores. Okay, yes. And then they select, they select, and then they put in an order sheet and then they give them the specific sizes that they want. Yes. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I'm assuming yeah. that's what fashion yeah, buying is. Yeah, it's more or less the same. I think with Nike it's going to be different, but with um, like Ed a big Con, retailers, yeah. then you meet up with suppliers, 
they show you what they have, or you create your own style. Right. And then um, you pitch it up to different suppliers, you get the better costs, and then you go with that person, you uh, put in your units, how many units you want, and then you send it to stores. And yeah, that's the And then you, you travel if you're buying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that yeah. with the TFG guys. Yeah, yeah all over yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To buy trains from overseas. Yeah. They are ahead of us. Oh, so that you also used to do that? Like uh, used to no, I didn't get to that because, you know, I was still an assistant buyer. I was fighting for that position. Oh, they of course. They didn't give me that position, so I left. I was like, I, I'm, I'm going. Okay, so you leave. But I didn't understand. When you left, did you leave to another job? Yes. But I left to another job, a completely different job. But was it already was, doing. was it already available, or you had yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. still? No, 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 no. I applied on the side. They accepted me. I actually applied to be a train forecaster. Oh, so you were safe. Yeah, yeah, in your yeah. I was safe. Yeah, when I was. You know, I guess, this guy I was like, like, oh, no, I'm fine. quitting because of my mental, no. <laughs> my mental illness. Look, I'm not saying mental illness is a bad thing, but guys, like, yeah, a job is a real thing. Like, yeah. you, look, it happens. It's a real thing, and I, I'm, I don't wanna. Um, downplay it because I've been there before yeah but the mistakes I know I did around that time is not keep up with the world as much as I am ill mentally or whatever it may be mm. but there's still a worldly purpose that I need to um, you know, to get into it. And one thing I hate about what happened is the fact that I stopped everything mm. to focus on this thing. Then I have to come back into the world and now keep up with like... No, it happens. Get back into keeping up. If there's one thing I wish I could have mastered, which is very difficult now looking back, is being able to do both. Mm. And I was privileged enough to have, let's say, my own company and I can put pause on that and go there. But if I really worked, like... Yeah. It wasn't going to be a thing. Uh, but sometimes time doesn't allow for both, you know? Sometimes you just need to focus on that one thing yeah. for you. You know what true, I mean? I don't true. think there's a set journey. Yeah. I know people like, wait until you have a job, of which I also highly advise. But also, <laughs> at the same time, it's like, sometimes things don't work out like that. A hundred percent. So with me, I had a job, and then... Um, when I got there, my job description just changed. Now I became a campaign manager. Now I was working with brands. I was no longer a trend forecaster. Okay. And Did you like that? that? I liked it. I think they picked me because at that time I had a, um, a blog. Okay. So they, were, they, they kept asking me about my blog and brands. I'm like, oh. what's happening here? Why are they, you know, too focused on that? Right. And then come to think of it, now I'm working with brands. But it was intimidating because I've never worked like in that environment, especially with big brands. Like my first campaign was with New Balance and I was like, oh my gosh, now I need to find influencers. Oh, so you were managing it yeah. from the back end. Yeah. You're you so putting like, the pieces that we so see. So like from like proposal, yeah, yeah, Oh yeah, my gosh. Finding influencers. To so you have knowledge it. in that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I worked in that for like a while, I think three years. That should possibly help with what you do now, shouldn't no, it? No, yes, of course. It like does. big I mean, time. now I work with brands. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like <laughs> that's what but I'm saying. In the, the front you end, know, the back end. You have the back. So what yeah. they're actually looking out for? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, but shit. also, I was getting booked as an influencer while working at an agency. So that's dope. Yeah. Okay, so now working for the agency. When does it start? When when does the hair thing start? After that. Immediately after? Yeah, I quit. So I did. Why did you quit? Uh, I've had enough, actually. And I just felt unappreciated. And I felt like I was going through a mental breakdown of some sort. Because I was working with a lot of brands. And there was so much pressure. There was a lot going on. And I just felt unappreciated. You know, like the working environment was not nice. So yeah. I was just like, you know what? The same I've got my own thing going on. So I don't need this. So the hair was already was already yeah, yeah. Uh, like with the blog it, it was still oh so like, it was a hair blog what do you mean by hair blog so like what a hair I mean? blog um so, <laughs> <laughs> so i was interviewing people with creative hairstyles and i was finding information that relates to that maybe it could be a music video uh, that they had creative hairstyles so it was more of a, a hair uh, creative hair lifestyle type interesting. of interesting so basically style. like how people have like a shoe blog where they tell you the age of the shoe, where the shoe come from, and yeah, all the tech, and yeah. you are doing that but basically. Mine was not that detailed. Okay. Mine, I would get like DJ Duop, 
interview her because I'm sure a lot of people want to know about her hair. Like and where she gets the inspiration. Hair, all and of that. Yes. Right, right, So right. then you'll pick up from there. Well, it did pick up. A lot of people really enjoyed that content. So while I was working, I was still doing that. And I also do my own shoots with my own hair. Because I was also going through my hair transitional stage and trying to experiment with different hairstyles. Right. Yeah. So then after the agency, I was like, mm, let me just, you know, do this by myself and see. So I just quit with no plan. <laughs> you quit with no plan? No job, no plan. Staying at home? Staying I... at home, yeah. Okay, so at least yeah, yeah. still safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I quit, like, without even telling my family or anyone, like, Ish, you know, about you. So what? They just saw you one day, you're at home. Uh, I had to confess. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ish, guys, I Hectic. decided to resign, you know. I'm sure they were not happy with your decision, because what the fuck? I'm sure. They were not happy, but they didn't show it. Like, they were so supportive, actually. Because, I think because I've always communicated, like, you know, my troubles or, like... Right, what you're not happy work. with. Like, I'm not happy at work with Oh, things, so, okay, so, so the decision didn't surprise them. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, oh, okay. And then what are you going to do? Like, mm, let me think about it. I'll come back. So then I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? This is the hair thing. Um, so I decided to a pop-up hair salon at a Basha Uhuru Cotton Hill. Dope. Um, I work with a friend of mine because, as I said, I'm not a hairstylist. <laughs> this thing just decided to come at me. It bombarded you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> my friend was like, she's an amazing hairstylist. So I was like, hey, let's collaborate. You do your controls and then I'll decorate and put my own creative touch to it. Dope. And the tech team. Um, I think that was the first pop-up hair salon um, at Cotton Hill that they've done so I was so happy that they gave us that opportunity um, we were charging people yeah we we're charging people but it wasn't a lot of money and the challenge with that was that people came late so we were there for sure from like 10 in the morning right so people only came at like four or five so it's like mm, damn spend the whole day sitting so you just see this concept <laughs> only at the end but yeah also how long does it take to do people's hair because women's no, hair no, men's no. are different but yeah no 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 it, it wasn't like from the beginning so you come with your braids and then you style your braids into like oh um, like we can we can we can take beads, braids make them cornrows simply yeah like okay, i get like you i get you i get you i get you, you know, okay uh, for the festival so then i did those markets thing for a while then i was like mm, mm, this is not working for me why wasn't it working because of the same reason like people were coming in late and also i understand how sensitive the whole thing of hair um people don't want to you know people are loyal to the hairstylist. Yes, they very much people. are. So yeah. like, they were not sure, you know, how. So, mm, like, you want to do that? <laughs> really? Yeah, okay, so fair. then I decided to create headpieces. And I was like, okay, how can I merge my fashion side with hair? But create like hair accessories that people can wear to events. Because not everyone was bold enough to even rock these creative hairstyles. So mm -hmm. other people wanted just to wear something and take it out. So right. This hat, you know? So I was like, okay, let me create head pieces. So while I was creating head pieces, then I banked my first campaign to showcase head pieces. I was like, this is great. Who was the so, campaign with? Uh, Ford. Dope, okay. They're doing like a, a music video. So they're putting different artists, like makeup artists, um, stylists, uh, a singer, and then me, hair, and then we dress up this artist, and then it becomes... Oh, video, so they wanted to. But while selling the car. Dope. So they, what, they wanted to make a concept from the top to the bottom, basically. Yeah, yeah. Full blown concept. Which was awesome and great marketing. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, then people started, you know, getting to know my work, seeing my work, and they were loving it. Then I got booked by Psyche uh, to do a hairstyle for her. She was performing at, uh, what's this place that's closed down now in Brown? The, hey, there's too the, many. I'm the joking. jazz <laughs> one, man. The um, ones. Flip, I know which one you're talking about. One, that one. The one close to the corner. Um, the one where yeah. JNP and Hive used to be, basically. Not really. It wasn't okay, but where Puma Social Club was. Remember? I mean, you, was it there? Yeah, it was. Puma next Social Club. Like, Puma up, Social Club was next to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then from there, then I started. It's, it's up the something, and, dude. Okay. I'll remember. It's still. <laughs> it's okay. Dude, where did um? <laughs> No. No, 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 no. Remember no, no. when we were with Mpo Sabina? Uh, when she was performing there with Michael, was there? Uh, what's that place called? Uh, but I know where. Yeah. Where the Puma Social Club was. Yeah. I thought the Puma Social was at the No, that's no, just no. before. No, oh, just okay. before. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Is it the basement? No. 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 Basement That's is fire artifice. Okay. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, then it picked up from there actually. Then I started getting more gigs and working in productions with artists and the rest is history. The rest is history. But I feel like Okay. Before I get a bit too technical, right? Yeah. Would you say, um, how do you, okay, not would you say, how do you think the concept called on though? Because, I mean, there's many other people that are, let's say, online yeah. um, doing their thing, which never really catches on. Do you think it caught on because you're at the right time, at the right, you're at the right place at the right time in terms yeah. of the concept of what you're doing? Yeah. Or did you sell it I in think such a way that it, it caught on. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, the blog helped in such a way to um, position myself as a creative okay. person. So by the time that I started doing my thing, people already like, knew. Because already when I was doing my blog, people were like, how are you going to make money? I was like, what's up with this pressure? Like, I am uh... going to make money. So people were already anticipating something that's going to come out of this. Then when I started doing head pieces and being featured, then people were like, oh, okay, now we see it, you know? But people are a bit slow, but yeah, I see very. now. No, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Respectfully. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, like... Oh, yeah, but yeah, it's, people take time. That's how like, it is in fashion, you know? You like, know, it's so deep in fashion that you see it happen, like, literally. Like, in fashion, you could do something now, it doesn't hit. Yes. And then a year later, someone does something yes. the same, and it hits. But fashion and hair is the same. They go hand in hand. I, I feel like everything else that has to do with art does. Yeah, so it's the same. So I think people caught on. I think, when, when can I say? When would you say you're on fire? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, everybody wants, <laughs> everybody wants a piece. <laughs> Yo, there's so many things happen in, in a year. Okay, firstly, I got um, into this program collab now now with the British Council. Mm -hmm. So they selected artists from all over the world um, to come together and exhibit and then went to Mozambique for that. Dope. Yeah, so that was like, okay. okay. Around what time is this though? 2018. Okay. That's the same year when I was starting. So I started this whole thing in 2018. So you started hot? Basically, he started on yeah, fire. Yeah, I feel like everything just picked up. It built up. Really quickly. Yeah, and I think, like, knowing the right people uh -huh. helped as well. Okay, because like, you're from the ag ad agency world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I already had people. Okay, okay, Psyche, okay, okay. I already okay. know Psyche, you know, so then it was easier to just, like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. okay. It's, you know, and with people, once they see it on a famous person, then they take it seriously. It's a validation. Yeah, it's yeah. a validation. Which is weird. Well. It's like, right? Like, why do I have to? But okay it's okay <laughs> <laughs> marketing. yeah um so i can say 2018 when i started it just it just took off honestly it just took off like and then from the but that's not when you started though but yeah. carry on that's when you started practically well yeah because i i really like how yeah, like uh, practically it's so crazy how so you doing it from a theory perspective really actually aided the practical side of it yes so when you did it practically, it because hit like I saw quick. a gap. I saw a gap. Like there's no one doing these creative hairstyles. No one is doing it. So I was like, hmm, because it was during that time where the natural hair world was yeah. like booming. I was like, hmm, okay, let me come up with a different angle, help these natural hair sisters to show them how they can, you know, do their hair in a different way, right? Like the typical braids, and you can still your braid, like your braids, but in a different way. Yeah. And also because. When I was doing like research or finding inspiration with you know, uh -huh. African hair, then I was like, why are we not doing you know what our ancestors used to do, but twist it in our own way? Today, and, yeah. right. Then I think actually got caught up in that and then enjoyed the... So that's basically the main... The visual language. That's the main purpose of what you're doing. Yeah. Is to redefine ancient hairstyles, yes. essentially. Yes into the modern times. Modern times. Yeah, because I just thought like it got lost. People are just getting weaves, yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay, you can, but it's like, you know, you can There's balance. more. There's more. You can still do your weaves and then next week, you know, do some... There's more. That's a good style. perspective though. There's yeah. more. Okay, so everything happens and when does it transition and why does it transition from you um, being the hairstylist? Because you are, you are a hairstylist, even though you're not. Okay, yeah. To being a hair artist so i think the artist, when doesn't transition 
when you move from being a hairstylist to a hair artist? There's so many ways of looking at that, though. Tell me, ho tell me well, two. Well, I want to ask, like, when you say hair art, like, from doing art, the actual hair art, or hair pieces? We could say both, because first, in the beginning, so in the beginning of your process, you were restyling hair, right? Yes. Um, uh, and adding your flair or your concept to yes. the hair, right? Yeah. And then, that's a, you're a hairstylist at that point in time. Yes. So when that, remember when that didn't work out with the whole pop-up market, yeah. then that's when I was like, let me just do something, maybe introduce what I've studied, like the skills that I've studied, and then merge them with hair, to do hair accessories, so hair pieces. That's being a hair artist. Okay, cool. Yes. So when does... Okay. It is, because you're making an accessory, I wear it. And yeah, then yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Who's the artist of that? It's A, B, C, D, F, G. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does that happen? And when does it happen? It happened the same year because I wasn't getting, I wasn't making enough money with the whole hair pop-up situation. Okay. So that's when I decided to do, like, create products that I can sell. Okay. It's easier that way than coming in with your hair and be like, okay. What sparked that idea, though? Did someone try buy something from you? for it? Um, Or did you just see the gap? Yeah, I just saw the gap. Honestly, I just saw the gap. And I also wanted to use the skills that I've learned at school, like, just to set me apart from everyone else. Like, because I think when you did fashion, no one thinks to go into hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just fashion, fashion. But the weird thing about it is most people that study fashion never really do fashion. I find that so yeah. crazy. It's, it's so crazy. I feel like it demotivates. Hey, I actually can't say this on camera. <laughs> I actually can't say it on camera because next thing people are going to be like questioning oh, their yeah, degrees. Right. It's only a very small percentage. Even in the world, dude, like majority of designers aren't qualified yeah. designers in yeah. the world. But anyway. I yeah. It's either you got it or you don't. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's either you got it or you don't, honestly. Yeah, so you asked me when did that start? Yeah, when and now. So you told me why and yeah. how. So when? So it started in 2018. 2018. Yeah. Around the same year? Like, yeah, around the same year. Yeah, doing a lot. Because the thing is, I'm a problem solver type of person. So if I see something not working, you need to solve I try it. to solve it quickly. Yeah, because I need to eat, I need to live, I need to... You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just sit on a concept that I see, okay, this thing is not working, and then, you know, like, I, I need to move on and be like, okay, what else can I do? Okay, and cool. And also because hairstyling is not really my strength that much, I can do hair, but for me, I just feel, I just, I just feel like it's, it's not too much strength. time. No, it's, yeah, I feel it's like just, it's too much time. Besides time, I'm, I'm very patient. So I don't mind that, but I just feel like it's just not my... It's like me sewing. I don't, I'm never sewing. Like I can hand sew my button back onto my shirt. Like, <laughs> see? See? So I prefer creating on my own and coming up with my own ideas because I'm a very creative person. So I need to have space for me to create all these ideas and mm -hmm. put them out there instead of just like being limited by someone's hairstyle and Dope. personality. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. So when do you think, when would you say being a hair t artist, when did you hit? Like, when was it like, oh my God, what the fuck is going on? Uh, I think this is was hit piece on Black is King. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's when, because that reached like global. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's I part mean, of Beyonce's Black is King. So it's exactly. like. Exactly. So it's like, people are like, oh, you did the love. And you're like, yeah, it's me. Yeah, because yeah. we didn't even know that that was even going to be featured. So we created that headpiece just in case, because she had her own wardrobe team doing everything else. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay. So it's just in case. Yeah, it was just in case. I created that headpiece in like what a day, two days. No, but it's it two was days. Two days. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. <laughs> I didn't sleep. Yeah. So it, it was a just in case because we didn't know what. All they said they wanted was so great and those colorful balls. Oh, so they already had a styling yeah, concept they, as to what had, they. But with the headpiece, it was just just in case. You know? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And so what, I can say that, and that was in 2019. What doors would you would you say oh, that opened? Uh, sure. I'm trying to check back. <laughs> um, I think that gave me. 
recognition in terms of head pieces and working with productions. Because mm -hmm. I think that opened more production work. Okay. Like with commercials, okay. Like music videos, and then, you know, then I was like, oh, okay, more artists now, more interested in doing head pieces right. for their music videos or, or productions. Yeah, so. So I'd like to believe that. you're also part of. I could be wrong. I'm yeah. taking my chances. Shaka Yilembe? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say anything. <laughs> Maybe not say anything if I get into trouble. But. Oh, <laughs> the season is done. Yeah. Your, your NDA is over. <laughs> your NDA is <laughs> over. <It's, it's, laughs> let's just say I did something. Yeah, I did something there. For the actual show? Yeah. I, I don't think it's one thing, though, because there's so many... No, um, I did one thing. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. One thing? Oh, it's my fault. No, sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? You have to dig deep into <laughs> yeah. this thing. No, because the thing is, I saw something and I was just like. They needed my help for that one thing. And then you did it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you're so shy. That's actually such a big moment because, like. Yeah, but like there's technicalities that I don't even understand. Like so what? That's why I'm like, I don't know if I should say something. Technicalities like what? Like, did they make trouble. you sign an NDA? Um, I think when you do something for such big productions, you don't really, they don't give the credit to you, they give the credit to the HOD. Yes, or yes. the company that... that yeah, that, so like, like, it's that situation, yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal. I, I totally get what you're saying. It's like, me as a designer, designing for a big brand, Yeah. Um, when the world speaks about it, it's about the big brand. Yeah. It's not about what I you. contributed. Yes. But me communicating about my contribution is not a big thing because I did contribute. <laughs> I did. Trust I me, did I contribute. Shout out to the whole world. Like, Yo, That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, yeah, okay. I, I and did. like creators need to know that. I think yeah. most people don't know, and they might. Uh, miss what don't they know? Opportunity that like the such. Situations things you can't talk about not really that you can't talk about but that you can't really take the credit if there's a yes i don't think we know that in this new digital age yeah and people will, will get mad and throw their toys yeah why didn't like why? but they yeah. paid you dog <laughs> exactly i don't think that's what i think i don't think people really get um the shift in today's generation mm. like in terms of um when you're hired and you're paid for something, like I remember someone was complaining that a photographer used to complain about not being credited on the posts, right? Yeah. Um, I remember Austin, I know he's my homie, but for me personally, it's like if I am paid, if I'm a photographer and I'm paid to shoot this bottle, yeah, and I shoot this bottle for a brand, yeah, for, okay. for this brand, for yeah. this dead yeah. brand, right? And I shoot this dead brand's bottle. And I was paid, and tomorrow they posted. Sorry about that. Tomorrow they posted, yeah. and I'm not tagged. I don't think it should be a big deal. Yeah. I personally don't, because you were paid. Yes, it could open up your doors if yes. I tag you. Yes. It could do change your life if I tag you, but I don't have to. Yeah, for brands I understand, but I feel like for an individual, you have to tag. Like for for like if a why? A, a why what's the difference? Or, What's the difference? What's the difference? Because with brands, I know there's an tape, there's corporate things that go into it. But even, I feel like as a, if you're tagging everyone and you're not tagging a photographer, then that's a problem. Okay, yeah, of course, of course, of but course. I'm so, yeah. What if no one's tagged? No one. If no one is tagged... Because <sighs> that's basically your scenario. Like, I'm assuming no one is tagged. Yeah, no, with, with, with that one, I understand. Like, it's, it's not a... It's job, it's job, dog. Like, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, with big brands, I don't mind. But, like, what, 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 a fashion blogger or an artist, whatever, that you help to create this image... No, we didn't help. We paid you. It's not about <laughs> that, though. It's not just about you pay. You no, still need to give credit. Look, but that's not what I'm saying, though. I get that you have to give credit, right? What? But what I'm trying to understand is when... What is the thin line yes. between giving credit and not giving credit? Because at the end of the day, if you're paid to do something, and after you're paid to do it, you do it, and then someone goes off and posts it, 
should it be a big deal that you were not credit but you were paid? That's 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 my question. It just oh. depends on the situation. I think it depends on the situation. You know what I'm saying? On okay. The agreement that you had. What agreement? Because uh, I, I paid you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no one says I'm going to tag you unless no. it's like, a, like, no one really stipulates on any deal that you're going to tag you for ABCDEFG. It's, 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 it's not. I think from a creator's point of view is because that helps you to get jobs. That it helps might. You. Yeah, it does. No, okay, no, it no, doesn't no, mind. It does. It, it does. does. It does. You're right. So when someone doesn't create it, it's like, oh. You don't want me to get jobs? Okay, cool. I get it. You know. Thank you. That's a very good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. So, Fine. There's this dope thing that you're doing, though, um, or that you did. I, I think you're still pretty much doing it, is that you're turning your concepts into actual art pieces. Yes. Um, that people can purchase and hang in their, in their houses or yes. add to their collections. And yeah. I need to know, obviously, the, the thinking behind that was to create um, a sustainable way of earning money. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, like, the concept behind doing that like yeah. when did it hit you that yeah. i can do this and turn into a tapestry mm. which i could potentially sell in an yeah. art gallery yeah yeah uh it started in 2020 <laughs> Ooh, hey, you're you moving, eh? hey, yeah, oh, yeah. hey you're moving with the time hey you <laughs> 2018, you start 2020 you're already changing plans <laughs> i told you <laughs> Your problem well, solver, problem. instantly. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh. 2020, there was a problem. No one was both were at home, so I had hair extensions. And I've always wanted to play with the whole doing like figurative works with hair. Because I've always had this thing that you must see, be, like, see your hair beyond your hair type of thing. Yeah. You know, because I see hair as a symbol, as a storyteller. So not just on your hair. You know, it means something. So as I wanted to continue telling African stories through hair, but in a canvas this time. Okay. Just as a reminder when someone's sitting at home, like, oh, okay, hair is my canvas type of Okay, I get you. Whatever. So, yeah, it came in 2020. I had resources at home. So then I started uh, conceptualizing, weaving, because I love weaving and textiles. Um, there were, like, tapestries at, 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 sorry, at home that inspired me. So I was just like, hmm, I really like this tapestry style because it's easy to tell stories through tapestry technique and because I'm fascinated about African history and craftsmanship I was like okay this is something a, you could do like a continuation also weaving is like plaiting hair. yeah so I was like this is a great Dope. concept and it's durable so it will, it will <laughs> yeah. last long so then I started experimenting I firstly started on pillows I had um, a piece um, with someone's hair and with like colorful hair so it was on a pillow first, and I was like, okay, let me put take the same, but in a canvas, because of the values more, and also I just yeah. wanted to see how it's going to look. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's a value. No, also, <laughs> You both, said that first. Both, 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 Okay, both. okay, fair. Uh, then, <laughs> I put on canvas. <laughs> both. There's nothing wrong with both. No, there's nothing wrong, yeah, bro. I feel like I'm laughing because you're denying it. I'm not denying it. I'm saying both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. 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 And then I put on the canvas and it looked amazing. Amazing. Like, it was just like, okay, this is it. This is my journey. I posted it on Instagram and I got a call from a gallery. Yes. Sister, what? I posted it. The gallery called me to say they want to have a meeting with me. And then they offered a solo exhibition based on that art piece. That's insane. That's insane. So you took a chance and you took a picture and you posted it on Instagram. Exactly. It's a gift, this thing. You see, it's a gift. When things are happening like that, it's a gift. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're but right. But I knew that there was, you know, potential for it to. But That's I so was crazy, a though. bit skeptical because something new. So I didn't know how people are going to react to it. Um, yeah, but then I got an opportunity then uh, to do a solo exhibition, which was whew, overwhelming, challenging. Why was it overwhelming? It's my first time. Because I mean, you did. And a, a solo, you need to fill up the whole space. How many, how many pieces did you make? I think 12? Oh, yeah, it was a lot. I had hair masks. I had 
tapestry artwork. Okay, so it's overwhelming because you need to deliver. Yeah, and yeah, because weaving, braiding, that's time. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> labor. <time>. That's labor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm new at this thing, and I'm just like, oh, I haven't figured out like my process. And there yet. is no money until you actually put everything into the. Yeah, yeah I get and it. Also, but I got sponsored. You know, so now it's like added pressure. Now yeah, because you need to you. deliver because the money's yeah, there. Yeah, so I found a studio. I found people to work with and. Soldiered on. It was crazy. How long did it take you? Two months? Oh, what? How I wish. I think half the year, six months. What? Yeah. Wow. So it takes that long? So six yeah. months for 12 pieces? I had, yeah. And different pieces. That's like head pieces, hair masks, figurative wow. works, photography work. Uh, and how do you think the um, solo show went? I think it went well. For me, because it wasn't about making money at that time. I think it was more of what people think what of it. I can do. Yeah, yeah, like who I who, who I am as an artist, you know, not just you know me too. That guy's creative hairstyle on so Instagram. Now like an artist. Yeah, now you're an artist. Yeah, so people were shocked. Actually, people were just like, "You're an artist." The hard work. <laughs> 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 uh, also, for my family, it was nice for my family to come see the work so that they can understand what I'm doing. You know, when I say I'm you're not just you're not just hey. saying that. I'm busy. It's, exactly. <laughs> now they understood. Actually. That's the most so fucked like, up thing about oh, being wow. like someone that's like self-employed. Yeah. Is that no one actually thinks you're busy. Yeah, exactly. No one. They're like, ah, oh, but it's your time. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like I'm busy. <laughs> like busy. For real, for real. Exactly. Like, so that went well. That went well. I think for me it was just a validation that okay, cool. Continue doing what you're doing. Um, yeah, because I'm still new at this thing. So, so now I can't say that I have arrived yet. Just now because I've worked with big brands. Did the shows in Africa happen after this? Yeah. Or was it before? Because I know you had like a couple of shows. I think it's in Kenya. No, it was one show. Ooh, thanks, but it was one show. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still a show too um, many. Like Yeah, it was one show um, in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, it was a group exhibition. And yeah, uh, the other group shows were here. How did you feel about that? Good. I mean, my work is still <laughs> collectors are still calling but you know they must take out their money now what they don't want to take out their money yeah so the guy is still you know negotiating with them but um for me now that's why i'm like money yes will come i don't i'm not scared of that but i just want my work to be seen by a lot of people and it can be seen globally because as an artist i feel like you don't just start and you know you yeah know, like People need Gradually. To be, yeah, and also for me, I need to be consistent, you know, for them to understand my style. That, okay, this is how I work. And for me to understand my creative process. Right. Okay, this is how I work. So it's more of an introduction. Right, so you don't mind. So, so, so it's more of a, it's like an experiment of some sort. Where for I, both parties. Because like I need feedback. Yeah. Yes. Also, exactly. Because galleries now are taking a, ch a chance with my work hey, but you unique. also take a chance on yourself yeah because it's unique okay, so, i get what you mean so like we still need to That's see a good how perspective. people feel about it like okay do they like it they don't people love it okay great are let's do this to, yeah let's change that's a good this. perspective though you know because i'm still new i'm not like that's why i'm like i'm not like an artist I, yeah i'm an artist but i'm still developing the, yeah developing stages I think I'll be more comfortable once I've had more years and I've done more shows and art fairs and you know. So you don't mind the, the pace that everything is going at because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a pace that still allows you to learn. Yes. So you don't necessarily want the pace that you go from zero to 100 because now you mit you you're, missing you're, <laughs> you're missing 99 yes. lessons. Yes. Essentially. Yeah. And also now the more I learn, I see that I'm, as an artist, you need to be an academic at some level. Why? Because there's some research that goes into your work. And Why does it have, that have to do with academics? You can't just... Some information you won't get from Google. You, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you can you get anything to, on Google though. Yeah, like with articles and journals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like with some... Okay, for me. Let me speak for myself. Let okay. Me, let me, me as an artist, I want to still go back to school to learn more, especially because of our, 
African history or philosophies that I want to tap into because the more I do my research, the more I see that shit. I don't like there's a lot of things that I don't know about my history, about who I am. So for me to explain that to like a normal audience or human being, you know, there's it's difficult because don't know much. language that I need to speak right. about. But in academic, then we can speak about more. We can do debates. We can. I, I can listen to a scholar that maybe has done research on this and then I that will expand my knowledge and get another perspective, you know? So a lot of people don't think that being an artist, you know, goes hand in hand with, with academics. But it does. It, it does. Like it truly makes sense. Yeah. You're right. That's a very good point though. And people don't because people see just like, oh, a beautiful image. You're just but cool. like the symbols. Oh, the cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> the cool girl. Oh, that's such a cool image. No, I get exactly what you mean. And I think um, you've answered my, my, or rather you've answered my mind because I do a lot of research, mm. right? But when I do research, I don't look at it as research. Like, I'm always just watching things that I want to learn about. Yeah. Like, if there's, let's say the thing that's happening now with Israel and Palestine, like, that's research I want to make. Yeah. And I'll watch everything I need to watch. Yeah. Even though I knew what was going on prior to that, but I didn't really buy into it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Till the war now that's happening in our day and age. Yeah, fine, it's been a war that's been going on for, for years and decades or rather centuries, mm -hmm. what could be. But now it's, it's more of a thing of, oh shit, this is what's happening. And I dig and I go into a rabbit hole and I mm. research. And that's basically what I do about everything. Yeah. That's why my home body, like I mm -hmm. like watching shit. And when I say watching shit, I hate series. Yeah, I do. I've, I, the recent series I watched was Succession. Mm -hmm. First series is probably watched in like two years. I don't think I watch a lot of series. I watch educational series. Yeah, stuff, I hate Because right? I feel like that too. Like every time I look at a TV, I feel like, um, every time I, I look at TV, I feel like if I'm going to waste my time watching TV, it has to be something I'm learning. Yes, exactly. I hate just watching shit that just fills my brain. Exactly. Like, I like learning. I know yeah. it sounds crazy, no, but no, like... No, it doesn't. I fully understand. Like, <laughs> I feel like I, I treat it as time. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm using my time to do this, it has to fill up my cup somehow. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I don't go there's that much. It has to Like, there's absolutely sense. no way this thing is getting my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm still the same guy. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> ex ex you see, exactly. So I'm glad cool. that I'm not going crazy. <laughs> no, I thought I was going crazy. No, because sometimes I can uh, talk about what I've learned, but people look at me like, mm -mm, you're too deep, or hey, yeah, what? So I need to speak to the people that understand yeah. what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It's like Netflix. Like, okay, like I don't even deep. watch it that much anymore because it's like. Yeah. There's not enough shows that fill up my cup. Yes. Like they used to be in the beginning, but I've watched all of them. <laughs> and some of them they lie. If you don't know your history, some of them they lie. <laughs> Dude, there's now like, there's just a bunch of bullshit. Like <laughs> now there's really just like now we're just watching for watching. You know? I want deep stuff. I want to I learn don't. about African cosmology and all the stars in the world, <laughs> all the serious stars. I'm that type of person. Like right. I need to I need you need programs. to stimulate your brain. Yeah. So if I don't have to go to school, then give me, you know, such information Somewhere, somehow. to be accessible for me to, you know, so then, go in these doors. Because hey, some of these doors, you won't get in because you don't have the knowledge. The knowledge. Yeah. But now, if you think you can watch stuff to get knowledge, why do you think still feel like you should go to school? I, I think for school is more of um, accessibility to certain... Because you have a degree, you'll be able to get into a certain room. Yeah. Don't you think it's a bit different in today's age? I'm just asking. I'm not uh, saying. It's literally a question. It is different, but up to a certain point. Like, for instance, I, I don't think I'm going to be, you know, an artist forever type of thing. Yes, I am going to be still be doing art, but, you know, I would love to be a lecturer or something. Oh, you know? okay. And for me to get there, so I, it's feature I, reference. I can't just, like... want to teach about hair one day. <laughs> it doesn't have to be hair. <laughs> I use hair as a symbol to teach about history. history. Oh! Yes. I include a lot of symbolism so in So basically my what you're saying is so you're using um, your hair art as an entrance into history. 
Yeah. You're using it as a point of reference for history. Yes. So you're not necessarily a hair artist. So like... Uh, you're a hair historian. So I'm a storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. That's fucking dope though. You know? Because hair is that. It is. It's history. Hair, and also, it's not one-sided. There's so many ways of looking at it. Other people. I mean... Spiritual, other people. You know. Okay, so now, before we close up, I need to find out a couple of things. Because I know... I feel like this conversation could go forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, the future... What's it looking like? Um, more exhibitions? Definitely. I want to focus more on my artworks. Um, I'm still going to do headpieces. I'm not sure about hairstyling part because Too much artworks time. Artworks need yeah, <laughs> time. So <laughs> Don't I worry, to, I know. I'm also trying to. The money and the time has to that balance. Bit. Exactly. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're going to take most of the time, I got to get my money's worth exactly so yeah definitely more of that and uh yeah studying i guess because i need to be what what are you thinking about studying african history yeah african history philosophy um yeah that type of cool so now we do something here called uh it's not really word of the day but it's word of the day like what? <laughs> Call it what it is. The word of the day. I don't want to say word of the day because everyone that comes on here that I say word of the day to yeah. thinks we're talking about like word of the day today. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, what are you talking about? I'm talking about like when I say word of the day, like what is your current way of thinking and that is like a light bulb. Like let's say my word of the day for today could be my word of the day to, today could be let me think about it because there's just been so much and I'm sorry about today but everything else that's been happening up to today what have I taken from that and okay, what do I live okay. by oh, okay, and I get you. what it is right now is trust your intuition that's what yes. my word of the day mm -hmm. right now is Yeah. so what is your word of the day uh, consistency that's because if it wasn't for consistency then I don't think I'll be here and also consistency in taking care of myself <laughs> Consistency in not giving up, um, consistency in solving problems. Yeah. So, what are the days? Consistency. Yeah. Cool. I live by that, by the way. I live by consistency. Yeah. I mean, life is about momentum, movement. So, if there's no movement, then there's nothing that's going to happen. So, so even if it's one move. step. Even if it's bad, even if you don't have a client, even if it's fine, you must constantly create. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Yeah. Amazing, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Imagine that. Why did you choose me, actually? Why not you? I don't know. All the creators. Why not you? <laughs> You're answering the question. <laughs> That's you. Okay, okay, okay. Let me answer the question. The reason why I chose you, um, I think what you do is very unique. And it's so unique that I haven't really encountered anyone else that does it at the level that you do. And especially to the fact that um, you do it extremely intentionally and how I perceive you moving or living your life. I feel like it's very intentional. And I think intentional people are purposeful mm -hmm. um, in a sense that intentional people know what they want and where they want to be. And that's why they do everything else intentionally. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, um, I have you here to speak about you and to get into how your brain functions just based on the things that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so that if anyone else wants to be a hair artist one point, at some point in time, yeah. they know which things to do or which yeah. directions to take. Yeah. So I want you to be a point of reference. Oh. And because you're the only one that's really doing, I can't say doing what you're doing, but that has excelled past anyone else that we know that do what you do, you're a good point of reference. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So that's why that. I have you here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. Cool. No, thank you for your yeah. time. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Dead Radio. With the main and banging is dead. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Apparently, I need to say that. Um, but yeah, catch us on the next episode. Follow me. And follow her. Don't worry. Her link is gonna be. <laughs> her link is gonna be in the description. Don't worry. I won't forget you. Don't worry. <laughs> cool, guys. Tell us who we should have next on our next episode. By the way, bless. And you're live on Dead Radio.